Hello fellow cyborgs! Today I would like to talk to you about some of my favorite movies. So as you may have noticed on this channel, I occasionally post movie reviews, not so much recently, but very at the very beginning of my channel I definitely tried to integrate that a bit more. I love movies, Rewatching movies is one of my favorite things to do when I have the time and I want the comfort. I'm much much better at rewatching movies than at rereading books. Today I wanted to show you some movies that I love to rewatch, why I love to rewatch them, and why perhaps you'd like to watch them yourself if you haven't seen them already. In no particular order, this is O oh Brother Where Art Thou. This stars George Clooney, John Turturro, Tim Blake Nelson, and John Goodman, among many other cast of characters. This is a retelling of Homer's The Odyssey that takes place in the early 1900s in the South. It starts out with the three main characters who are part of a chain gang escaping as Ulysses Everett McGill is desperately trying to get back home. His partners in crime have been bribed with shares of a treasure that McGill says he can deliver. So this is a really brilliant adaptation of Homer's The Odyssey. It's subtle, but if you know it's there, you can look for it. But if you didn't know that it was an adaptation, it would still completely hold on its own. The soundtrack to this is one of the most brilliant parts of it. Some of those songs are absolutely beautiful. They're folky and old-timey, but they're just really resonant, and I really, really love that movie soundtrack. The other thing about this is that it has some of the best lines ever. We thought you was a toad. Do not seek the treasure. I don't want fuck. God damn it, I'm a Dapper Dan man. It's just amazing. Oh my goodness. So clever and funny. So many wonderful quotes that I just use in my daily life practically. Highly entertaining, literarily revel revelant, relevant, <laughs> and just a whole, whole lot of fun. If you haven't picked this up, really please give it a try. It's really worth your time. This is The Fall, one of my favorite movies of all time. This stars Lee Pace is pretty much the only name I actually recognize in this movie. And this is a split narrative movie. It, well, it's not a split narrative. It's more like a story within a story. This follows a young girl, she's about six, named Alexandria, who's broken her arm and she's staying in this hospital. And in there, she meets Lee Pace's character, who is a stuntman who has very badly injured his back. And so he's staying at the hospital and he's almost suicidal. He's not in a really good place. He's intrigued by Alexandria and he starts telling her stories. And then we get to see those stories play out. This is absolutely brilliant in its storytelling and how it folds characters together because uh, Alexandria's imagination will place people she sees in the hospital within the stories that are being told to her. This has a really heartbreaking ending, but uplifting as well. It you know, it just it made me weep when I first saw it, but it, you know, it ends on a really hopeful note. There are some gory bits. It's very fairy tale esque in the balance of violence and whimsy, I guess. This is an unknown movie and I adore it so much. And if you haven't seen it, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you give it a try. It's, it's, it's a contender for my favorite movie of all time. Absolutely. This is Funny Face starring Audrey Hepburn and Fred Astaire. I love Audrey Hepburn. She is my favorite silver screen actress and I have six, seven, seven of her movies. Hang on one second. Seven of her movies on my shelves. And this is my favorite. In this, Audrey Hepburn plays Joe Stockton, who's a philosophy buff. She works in a philosophy bookstore in New York and she gets roped into this modeling world and eventually gets taken to Paris, which she desperately wants to go because there's a professor of empathicalism, which is a philo philosophical idea. And so there's a professor there who's the father of empathicalism that she wants to talk to. And that's the only way that these modeling agencies, these magazine people get her to Paris is because she will be able to find this philosopher. This is a musical and it has a lot of dance numbers because Fred Astaire is in it. The songs are just so goofy and fun and I just love the fact that Audrey's character in here is really bookish and quiet and you know severe. She's very serious and she's surrounded by all of these flippant people and somehow they find ways to learn from each other. It also has a bit of a romance in there which I found very sweet and believable. It's just definitely one of my favorite Audrey Hepburn movies. No, it is my favorite Audrey Hepburn movie, though 
I bounce back and forth between which ones are my favorites depending upon how much I've seen them. This is just really fun, you know, dancing, singing, mix-ups, and it's pretty much like a very elegant rom-com and musical. You know, that might turn you off, but really, if you're interested in Audrey Hepburn or Fred Astaire, or you like musicals that are intellectual and goofy at the same time, I highly recommend that you give this a try. So this is The Perks of Being a Wallflower, starring Logan Lerman, Emma Watson, and Ezra Miller. And as you all know, as part of the booktube community, this is based off of a book by the same name by Stephen Chbosky. And I believe Chbosky wrote the screenplay to this as well. I really love this movie. I've been creeping on Logan Lerman and his gorgeous eyebrows for ages, ever since Percy Jackson, and have just felt like an absolute perv the entire time. This has some very wonderful young adult actors in here, Emma Watson. We all know Logan Lerman and his eyebrows, and he's just so good at being able to be vulnerable on the screen, which is just something that is amazing to see in a young man. And Ezra Miller, my God, he, like, holy crap, he is just powerhouse. <laughs> He's absolutely fantastic. This follows Charlie, who had some sort of mental breakdown, and he's starting high school, and he's trying to find his place in high school, and he eventually finds this group of friends of which Emma Watson and Ezra Miller's characters are a part of, and he gets involved in their lives, and it's, it's about a mental illness. It's about the struggles in high school. It's about, you know, the social relationships that you have to deal with in high school and how that intersects with your family. It's about trust, a lot of it. Trust and love. And it's just really quiet. And it's not the happiest thing ever. You know, it, it's not necessarily fun to watch, but it's it's enjoyable. And I'm really interested in reading this, but I've heard that the original book is a bit bleaker than, than the movie's portrayal of it. And the hope that this movie had in here is, is one of the reasons why I really, really enjoy watching it. If you've read the book, I highly recommend that you try watching the movie adaptation. Or if you haven't read the book, watch the movie adaptation anyway, because I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. And seeing this movie and loving it has made me consider picking up a book. I ordinarily my pass up. This is another teenage movie based off of a teenage-ish novel. This is Beautiful Creatures, and this stars people like Jeremy Irons, Viola Davis, Emmy Rossum, Alden, Aaron Reich, Alice Englert, and Emma Thompson. So this is based off of a YA series which had to deal with witches in the South of America. I've read Beautiful Creatures, and it was super duper angsty. Like, when I was reading it, I wanted to buy black converse and I wanted to paint my nails black and I wanted to write my poetry again. This is not nearly as angsty. This is a lot more quirky than that. This is about two young teenagers. One boy who's kind of, you know, he's in, he's in like a junior in high school and he's fits in pretty much. You know, he's not one of the popular kids, but everyone pretty much likes him. And then in moves into the town, Lena Duquesne, who is the niece of Macon, who is the town shut-in, the town hermit, who just completely does not mesh with this town's sort of being. Ethan, which is our, our main male character, he is intrigued by Lena and he ends up befriending her and learning that she is a caster, which is in essence a witch. And when she turns 16, which will be in a few weeks, she is claimed either for the light or the dark. So she either becomes a, you know, a, a benevolent witch or one who feeds into the darkness. And that's a curse for the female casters, unfortunately. But in here, the acting is just absolutely superb. The actors who play Ethan and Lena are just really subtle in how they depict their characters. It's not melodramatic. This is just like so, you know, quietly well done. And though it still gives me the giggle, as it's giggles, it's nothing overt, like Ella Enchanted whenever I watched that obsessively when I was, you know, at 13. This also has some really powerhouse hitter actors as well. Jeremy Irons, Viola Davis, and Emma Thompson are superb. Emma Thompson is not in it very much, but she has this one scene, which every time I watch this movie, it just gives me chills. She's just brilliant. Oh my goodness, that woman. So this is my guilty pleasure of the moment. And as you may know, there are lots of references to books in here. And one of Lena's favorite books is To Kill a Mockingbird, which is why I recently picked up a copy of To Kill a Mockingbird. So yes, guilty pleasure. But I think that this is a movie based off of a YA book aimed at a teenage audience that is 
actually really quality. Like it's a it's a really well made movie. The the atmosphere is great. The acting's really great. And though the material that it comes from may have its issues, I just think that this is a really well done movie to stand on its own. Every time that movie finishes, I just have a huge smile on my face. So if you feel like this might be something that you want to pick up, maybe for Halloween. I mean, there are casters, there are witches in here. You know, there are some spookier elements. But yeah, just just give it a try if it sounds like it's it's your cup of tea. It, it might be. It's a lot of fun. I really, really enjoy it. Last thing I want to talk to you about is Jim Henson's The Storyteller. This is a like mini series almost. I think there are 12 different episodes. This is Jim Henson redoing and renaming some of the very famous tales from around the world. This is hosted by John Hurt, who is this gentleman here. I don't think you can see him very well. Who's got prosthetics on his face, but oh my goodness, the, the best narrator ever. This covers a great many different fairy tales that you may know of. They redo the tale of donkey skin. They redo the one where the like siblings get turned into birds and the sister has to be silent for a certain amount of time or else they can't break the curse. They remake the boy who couldn't shudder or the boy who couldn't feel fear. So there are a lot of really familiar fairy tales in here, but they're done just so beautifully, just so well done. There's a bonus appearance of really, really young Sean Bean in here because he's in everything. But yeah, it's just, it's just so great. It's just so great. It's so incredibly entertaining. I have never seen fairy tales told so well. It's just a bit goofy, but just oh so sincere and heartfelt. Just absolutely, absolutely brilliant. There are just so many really great characters in here and they, you know, it's just this, the how, how they've imagined this world is just absolutely fantastic. So if you are a fan of fairy tales and you haven't picked up the storyteller or you are a fan of just stories that are told really well and, and that you wish that you had like the best bedtime stories to be read to you now as an adult, just put on an episode of the storyteller. My goodness, it is just like fodder for the imagination. It's so fun, so well done. My One of my favorite series ever and it's just needs more representation. So please, please, please give this a try. If anything that I have told you, Sean Bean, fairy tales, characters, just if anything appeals to you in here, please give it a try. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about some of my favorite movies. These are not by far all of my favorites. I have in fact a tire, an entire DVD shelf full of my favorite movies. There are so many because there are so many good movies in my life. Please let me know in the comments down below if you've seen any of these or if I have piqued your interest in any of these and if you think you're going to try to watch them upon my recommendation. Thank, thank, thank you for watching this only barely bookish video. I hope that you enjoyed it and until next time, continue to be lovely. Just a quick thank you to my patrons who are supporting this channel through Patreon. Thank you so much for doing so. I hope you enjoyed this non-bookish video and are having a wonderful day.